This is the story of a guitarist's attempt at sabotage and a secret recording that led to one of the more defining and influential bands to come out of the 1990s. Creep by Radiohead from their debut 1993 album Pablo Honey is one of their most iconic songs, though it was initially a bit contentious within the band. We'll explore that shortly, but to set the stage, we need to look at the early days of Radiohead. After meeting in a boys' school in Abington, Oxfordshire in 1985, the members of Radiohead formed a band called On a Friday, after the day of the week they performed. The lineup included Tom York on vocals and guitar, Johnny Greenwood on guitar and keyboards, Colin Greenwood on bass, Ed O'Brien on guitar and backing vocals, and Phil Selway on drums. Early influences would include bands like R.E.M., Pixies, The Smiths, and Talking Heads. The guys had an affinity for post-punk and jangly guitars. In 1988, York would enroll in Exeter University, studying English and fine art, and ultimately graduating with degrees in both. It was during this time he wrote Creep, the song that would launch the band to international success. The song is about feeling inadequate and unworthy, which would really resonate with many listeners as grunge and alt-rock took hold in the early to mid-1990s. It would go on to become a hit and join others like Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana and Loser by Beck as a core slacker anthem of the decade. After signing a six-record deal with EMI in 1991, on a Friday, changed their name to Radiohead, lifting it from the Talking Heads song on True Stories from 1986. Talking Heads wasn't the only thing that Radiohead lifted from others. Early in the band's history, they weren't nearly as original as they would ultimately become. The name Pablo Honey, for example, was actually pulled from a Jerky Boys skit. You know that phone prank band? Let's take a listen. Hello? Yeah? Pablo Honey? Yeah? Please. Honey, come down to Florida. Huh? And then there's Creep itself. Look into the liner notes and you'll see that Albert Hammond and Mike Hazelwood are credited as co-writers. Well, who the heck are they? This took place after legal action claimed that Radiohead took elements from their 1972 song, The Air That I Breathe, which was released to great acclaim in 1974 by the Hollies. The credit was an agreement. It stemmed from the band's honesty about the references to the air that I breathe that found their way into Creep. That honesty happened during arbitration. It led to that relatively minimal credit. Compare that to other litigations that didn't really go in band's favors. I'm looking at you, the verb. Radiohead never intended for Creep to be on Pablo Honey. When Radiohead first performed the song in the late 80s or early 90s, the audience response was really lukewarm at best. It kind of fell flat. Furthermore, some band members kind of had mixed feelings about the song. We'll get into that in a second. But first, we need to turn to the recording studio itself. Recording Pablo Honey was a bit of a struggle. The band was new to recording, and they had trouble finding their groove in the studio, failing to get results early on. Between takes at Chipping Norton Studios, the band spontaneously performed Creep as they revisited the song recently. Afterwards, York jokingly referred to it as their Scott Walker song, after the enigmatic performer from the 1960s pop group The Walker Brothers, who also had kind of a defining subsequent solo career as a lovelorn songwriter and crooner. Producers Sean Slade and Paul Caldery mistakenly took this to mean that Walker had actually written the song, with one noting to the other later that day, too bad their best song's a cover. When further sessions failed to produce solid results, Caldery requested they play Creep. After playing it, everyone in the studio applauded. Caldery and Slade had recorded the entire take without the band knowing. Drummer Philip Selway would later say, quote, the reason it sounds so powerful is because it's completely unselfconscious. Lead guitarist and multi-instrumentalist Johnny Greenwood really didn't like the song. He didn't like Creep at all. He found it too soft, too commercial. It just was bland in his opinion. When Caldry requested they pause and perform Creep after struggling to get 
a few other tracks to really land in the studio, he set out to sabotage the song. And Greenwood's famous attempt to derail this track became one of its most defining features. Just before the chorus, he played a series of really aggressive guitar stabs, which were intended to completely disrupt the song. But instead of ruining it, these stabs added one of the most memorable elements, elevating the angst and anguish to York's lyrics and vocal delivery of the chorus. Here's a quote. It was recorded while we were actually in the studio to record two other songs, Greenwood told the St. Louis Post-Dispatch shortly after the release of Pablo Honey in 1993. We were asked to play some things to check levels of the tape. I didn't like it. It stayed quiet, so I hit the guitar hard. Really hard. Revisiting the song more than 30 years later, that burst of noise, it's really unexpected if you haven't heard the track. It starts out soft, melodic, and moody. Then you hit the moments just before the chorus, and Greenwood's attack on guitar hits you hard. Talking about the song on MTV in 2013, Slade would recall hearing, quote, from a couple of very professional producers who expressed amazement that we left it in. Of course, not only did we leave it in, but we made it so loud that it punched you in the face. And really, the noise has almost become as famous as the song itself. End quote. And it's true. The song would not land as powerfully without it. It is truly a defining moment in the song and in the launch of the band's career. If you like album stories like these, keep an eye out for a new one every week. I love digging deep to explore the history of bands and songs and albums within my record collection. This dude is a damn nerd. I'm Andy. This is the Fence Post Vinyl Channel. I'll see you in the next video.